Uh, good afternoon. Uh, in Parshat Chayei Sarah, we hear of the negotiations that Avraham enters into to purchase a burial place for Sarah upon her death. And when Avraham opens those negotiations, he turns to um, his neighbors, B'nai Chet, and he says, Ger v'toshav anochi imachem. I'm a resident alien. Ger v'toshav. Uh, and uh, the commentaries all like delve into this uh, this phrase. It's sort of an oxymoronic phrase. Ger v'toshav. Ger means a stranger, um, an immigrant, uh, someone who is not from that location. Toshav is a resident. How can you be uh, a resident alien? How is that possible? Okay, it, it's if you're if you're ger, you're not a toshav. If you're a toshav, you're not a ger. And the commentaries give various answers. They explain that in some ways he was like a stranger. He had not come from from the Hebron region. Uh, in some ways he was like, and that's why he had no burial place prepared. Uh, in some ways he was like a Toshav. He had lived there for uh, for decades at the time of Sarah's death, and that's why he wanted to purchase a burial place in that location. And Siv goes in this direction. Uh, Rashi says, uh, your treatment towards me uh, will depend on how I will um, treat you. If you treat me as as a stranger, uh, then that's fine. I'll pay. I'll pay the money, and I'll purchase a location. But if you refuse to sell me a burial location, then I'm going to claim my rights as as a toshav, as a resident, uh, um, as the person to whom God has promised this land, and I'll claim by force a place to bury uh, my wife. So and that's a very different kind of attitude uh, that Avram is is adopting. Uh, but I, I think the oxymoron itself, that that tension of being of a place and not of a place, of being a resident and being a stranger, uh, is actually um, part of the, the Jewish condition uh, in a much more uh, broad way. And so Avraham's stance towards his neighbors, that, that stance that he adopts towards the Bnei Chet of Ger uh, that's a stance that all of us uh, adopt vis-a-vis the outside world. In some ways, we are uh, we're foreign. We we have a value system that derives from the Torah that is uniquely ours, and we owe special... Um, Solidarity to our uh, B'nai Brit, to those who share this covenant of Torah, uh, this part of the Jewish people, uh, and at the same time, we're we're also Toshavim, where we're also uh, good neighbors and good citizens and residents of the places where we live, and we owe that um, uh, that integrity and, and that uh, neighborliness to to those around whom we live, and all of those tensions that are there when Avram turns in this desperate state to try to find a place to bury his, his wife after living in a land for decades but doesn't actually have a piece of earth of his own, um, that, that's inherent in all of our interactions with our surrounding culture. We uh, have distinct identities, but we're also uh, residents with, with a, with a you know, firm, firm uh, foundation in the places where we live and strong bonds of neighborliness and solidarity and friendship and citizenship with uh, with those amongst whom whom we live. Uh, this this the past week we've been marking the the death of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, uh, the former chief rabbi of the United Kingdom and a public intellectual par, excel, par excellence, author of over twenty books and uh, you know featured uh, uh, comment, news, uh, radio commentator and um, uh, you know uh, member of the House of Lords, uh, professor teacher and and what was particularly unique about the career of Rabbi Sachs is that he wasn't a rabbi to Jews alone. He was in many ways uh, a rabbi to, to the entire world. He, he distilled kernels of wisdom from Jewish tradition that were relevant and helpful uh, to all to all human beings. And, and that's that was the career that he lived, and and so even though uh, he wrote uh, some very distinctly Jewish uh, uh, writings, you know, he, he published a commentary on the Torah portion and had a podcast where he offered his commentary on the Parsha. Uh, he actually apparently he finished all of uh, this year's cycle of Parsha essays in advance. So his his office is going to be releasing a Parsha essay by Rabbi Sachs uh, for the rest of this year, which is an incredible uh, a gift that he left us, and just really, uh, you know. Uh, if you're wondering, I, I, do, I do not do that. I do not prepare that part in advance uh, when, I, when I speak about the Parsha. So it's also uh, pr- pretty impressive uh, just from a professional uh, standpoint. 
Um, so he so he addressed uh, unique Jewish concerns and wrote about the parsha, wrote a commentary on the Sidur, was working on a commentary on the Chumash, um, but he also published books uh, with general publishers about morality and about uh, multiculturalism and um, uh, religious tolerance that were published by general publishers, were read by people of all faiths, um, and that was also his audience. Uh, and I think what was even particularly special was that the writings that he offered the Jewish community, his commentary on the Sidur, his commentary on the Chumash, uh, were uh, written in such a way that they could also be appreciated by, by a general audience. Uh, and that's why, I've, I've, not the first time I've said this, why, why I'm so happy that Arshul has uh, the Sidur that he edited and translated is because uh, any person can walk into the doors of Arshul, and if you remember what it was like when Arshul had doors that were wide open, anyone and everyone did walk through the doors of Arshul. And with Rabbi Sachs's Sidur, they had a introduction to our very particular and specific way of prayers and the ancient texts of our Sidur and our Orthodox rites um, that we perform here in our synagogue, but they were explained and translated uh, in, in a language that um, could convey their wisdom and their beauty uh, to, to everyone uh, and to anyone. And uh, that, that achievement that he was able to accomplish with his Sidur translation and commentary, that was really ex uh, exemplified his entire life's work. So the rest of us are not authors, and we're not uh, public intellectuals, and we're not scholars of his caliber, uh, but we can also live our lives as Gerva Toshav, okay, as people who possess a distinct identity uh, of which we're proud, uh, that sets us apart and makes us different from others, but uh, that also allows them to respect us and appreciate us because it is um, a, uh, an example of ethical ex excellence um, and an example of wisdom which, which everyone uh, who interacts with us can appreciate. Um, so I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. I hope to see some of you uh, in person on Shabbat. Uh, weather's going to be just warm enough that we're going to have outdoor tefillah. We have uh, Torah readers lined up for the early and the late uh, tefillahs. I'm recording this uh, message. There are empty slots uh, at all of these tefillot, including Friday night and Shabbos afternoon. And I uh, hope to see some of you in person and the rest of you hope to hear from you uh, via email or whatever mechanism. Uh, in the coming in the coming days, if you have uh, reactions any, to anything I say or teach, uh, please please reach out. I'd love to hear your own thoughts uh, or further questions. All right, Shabbat Shalom.